See you next, Bagosora, the mastermind of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. He died days ago, but who was this man? And how did he end up a brain behind one of the deadliest atrocities of the 20th century? Bagosuera was a Rwandan military officer. He was born on the 6th August 1941 in Gichie, Nyabihu district, Western Province, part of Rwanda. In 1964, he graduated from the Ecole des Officiers, official school in Kigali with the rank of second lieutenant and continued his studies in France. During his military career, he served as second in command of the Superior Military School in Chigari and as commander of Kanombe Military Camp. On 29 April 1970, he was promoted to the rank of captain, became full colonel in 1989, and he was appointed to the position of chief of staff in the Ministry of Defense in June 1992. Though in August 1993, he was present at the negotiations of the Arusha Accords, which were the peace agreement between the then government of the Republic of Rwanda and the Rwandan Patriotic Front to end a three-year Rwandan civil war, he never supported them. He is widely recited as saying, in the context of the Arusha Accords, that he was returning to Rwanda to prepare for the apocalypse. Luc Marshall, a Belgian officer who served as Kigali sector commander in UNAMIR, reported that Bagosura told him that the only way to solve Rwanda's problems was to get rid of the Tutsi. Bagosura was responsible for establishing paramilitary so-called self-defense units, the Inera Hamge, that would operate in every commune in the country. These groups were to act in concert with the local police, militias, and military authorities. Bagosora was also responsible for distributing arms and machetes throughout Rwanda. Between January 1993 and March 1994, Rwanda imported more than 500,000 machetes, twice the number imported in previous years. At about a quarter past 8 p.m. on the evening of 6 April 1994, President Abjarimana was flying back to Chigari after a meeting when his plane was struck by two missiles fired from the ground. The plane crashed, killing everyone on board. The position of Rwandan government is that the missiles were fired from the Kanombe barracks, which was also proven by American reports, and that barracks were controlled by the presidential guard. After the assassination, Kano Bagosola, along with Kano Gwagafirita, gathered supporters and convened a meeting of a crisis committee. Homeo Daler, the UN commander, was invited and arrived to find the senior leadership of the Rwandan army. Daler rejected Bagosola's proposal of having the military take control of the political situation until they could hand it over to the politicians. Daler reminded him that Rwanda still had a government headed by Prime Minister Agath Uwirinjimana. Wagosora responded that she was incapable of governing the nation. A few hours later, Madame Agathe was murdered with her husband by members of the Presidential Guard and the Army. After Wagosora's failed attempt to have the military take over the lot of government, the group proceeded to pick a provisional government the interim government was a multi-party group, but all came from the hardliner sections of their respective parties. Massacres began all over the country. The names and the addresses of victims having been on lists had Jamil Colleen broadcast incitements to murder. Trucks began arriving to pick up scores of bodies. On the morning of 7th of April, 10 Belgian peacekeepers who had been guarding Prime Minister Agathe and who were witnesses 
to the government troops laying siege to her residence were disarmed and taken to Camp Kigali, approximately 200 meters from where Kano Wagosora was holding a meeting of military officers. The peacekeepers were murdered over the course of several hours by military personnel. During his testimony, Kano Wagosora admitted attending to the scene while the murders were in progress though claiming he could do nothing to stop the killings. As anticipated, the death of the 10 Belgian peacekeepers prompted the withdrawal of most peacekeeping troops from Rwanda, effectively clearing the way for slaughter. Over the next 100 days, people were being killed at an astonishing rate. The number of dead in the genocide exceeds a million people. Upon the interference of Rwanda Patriotic Army, led by current President Kagame in response to the genocide, Bagosola fled into neighboring Zayil, the now DRC. Fed and protected in refugee camps, supported by millions of dollars in international aid, him and his colleagues were able to hold meetings and to recruit new members. With Bagosola actively involved, they attempted to build their military structures with the purpose of wiping out the Tutsi population. Bagosola later moved to Cameroon with several other colleagues. It was there that he was detained with Andre Najerura. In 1997, he first appeared before the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, in Arusha, Tanzania, to face 13 counts of 11 different international crimes based on the laws of genocide crimes against humanity, and war crimes. The joint trial with three other senior military officers charged as co-conspirators opened on 2nd of April 2002. During his trial, further evidence was submitted that in 1991, he and other co-accused helped to draft a document where they referred to the Tutsi ethnic group as the principal enemy, which was widely distributed in the army. They were also accused of supporting the media outlets responsible for spreading hate messages and making lists of victims. The trial wraps up on the 1st of June 2007 after five years with Kanotones Bagosora still maintaining his innocence. Bagosora was on December 18, 2008 found guilty of genocide murder, extermination and persecution as crimes against humanity, violence to life and outrages upon personal dignity as well as rape. He was therefore sentenced to life imprisonment. However, on December 14, 2011, the appeals chamber, then presided by the judge Theodore Mellon, reduced his sentence to 35 years in prison. He had recently requested for early release, but this was struck down by the president of the Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals, which took over from ICTR, citing lack of remorse as one of the reasons he had to serve the full length of his sentence. On 20th September 2021, his death was confirmed by an official with the United Nations International Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals in The Hague. The official did not specify the cause of death. However, though they did not divulge more details, family sources announced that the eight-year-old succumbed to disease and died in a hospital in Mali, where he had been imprisoned since 2012. Stay tuned. Maximed, link up with the world.